Hello, this is a specimen of the distal esophagus together with the proximal stomach. So here is the fundus of the stomach and these are the folds or the rugae of the gastric mucosa. This is the gastroesophageal junction and here is the mucosa of the esophagus. As we take a closer look, uh, we can see that the mucosa of the distal esophagus is abnormal. It appears to be irregular rather than smooth. There are some uh, ridges or raised areas. And um, let me just rotate this slightly so that we can appreciate the irregularity of the mucosa. In some areas, the esophageal wall actually appears to be thickened and we can see a whitish infiltrative tumor here. And I'm going to turn it so that we can look at the adventitial surface. In most areas, the esophagus is not covered by serosa on its outer surface. Rather, it is um, composed of adventitial tissue. And this tissue is in contact with the mediastinal structures. So the circumferential surface of the esophagus is actually a surgical margin. Therefore, it is very important to sample these areas and examine them under the microscope to see if the tumour goes all the way to the outer or circumferential margin. In this instance, I do not see any obvious tumour that is coming out onto the adventitial surface. So here is an example of a malignant tumour in the distal esophagus. And this is likely to be a carcinoma because it arises from the mucosa. There are two possibilities. Um, it could be a squamous cell carcinoma because we know that the esophagus is lined by stratified squamous epithelium, but it could also be an adenocarcinoma. Particularly in the distal esophagus, adenocarcinomas can occur quite frequently. And the most important risk factor for adenocarcinoma of the esophagus is Barrett esophagitis. This is uh, due to injury, perhaps reflux of acid from the stomach into the distal esophagus, giving rise to metaplasia of the squamous epithelium into glandular epithelium with intestinal metaplasia. That is a predisposing risk factor to the development of dysplasia and subsequently adenocarcinoma. So we would need to examine this microscopically to be able to tell what type of malignancy this is. Moving on to the clinical picture, because we can see that this tumour is actually circumferential, it kind of spans the entire circumference of the esophagus, it is likely to cause some degree of obstruction or stricture, in other words, narrowing of the lumen. Therefore, this patient may complain of dysphagia and also loss of weight and possibility of bleeding as well because of mucosal ulceration. So to summarise, this is a specimen showing the distal esophagus, the gastroesophageal junction, and the proximal stomach. And there is a tumour arising from the mucosa in the distal esophagus. And the possibilities include adenocarcinoma uh, with Barrett esophagitis as a risk factor or squamous cell carcinoma.